I'm really glad to welcome all of you at such an early hour here at our assembly, Health of Moscow, Health of our capital. This is a unique event which is organized in a very new expanded format. It attracts not only specialists but also the uh, citizens of our capital and all interested persons. I'm uh, sorry for my voice because it's been the third day of uh, my course voice because I got a cold and uh, nevertheless we will do our best to uh, make everything smoothly and interesting and uh, at a high level. Uh, with uh, big pleasure I'd like to introduce to you Alexander Repici, our expert, head of the Department of Endoscopy of the Digestive System of the Clinic of the Intelligence Institute Humanities. Professor, the person who mm, visited many times our country, our city, and uh, with a big interest we welcome him here and uh, it's a big pleasure for us to meet him here. He brings all the time some, any, something new to us, very important for us, especially our today's meeting is devoted to high quality endoscopy. Let's uh, welcome Alexandro. Of course, Yevgeny Nikonov is with us today, head of the Department of Gastroenterology, Faculty of Continuing Professional Education of the Russian National Research Medical University, named after Pyrogov. Yevgeny is very well known expert. He's a very important organizer of this wonderful event. He's a person who organizes a lot of different, very important educational in events devoted not only to gastroenterology but also to endoscopy. He leads a number of projects in this area. Let's welcome Yevgeny, dear colleagues, please give him a hand. And uh, Sergei Kashin is also here. You know him very well too. He comes from Yaroslavl City, wonderful master class, uh, very well known, not only in our country but also abroad. Wonderful organization, masterclass, which is now uh, getting as a momentum. And uh, expert specialists of higher class come to visit him with pleasure. And we also take part with pleasure in this wonderful event. Sergei is the head specialist, freelance and, uh, endoscopy uh, and specialist of Yaroslav region. And he's also a big expert in the uh, artificial intelligence in endoscopy and uh, high-quality endoscopy. Let's welcome Sergei. And now, please uh, be more active in uh, our in course of our meeting. Please don't hesitate to ask questions. Despite the fact that we are not so many here, I uh, hope that uh, others will join us because the topic is really interesting and uh, and relevant. Please be active, and uh, Yevgeny, maybe we will give the floor first to our guest, or, or you, you, please, please, Yevgeny, unless you have the floor. Good morning, dear colleagues. It's really the third day of our forum today. Despite a very early morning, we registered more than 50,000 participants, and the first two days every day, uh, we registered more than 20,000 as far as I understand, people are quite stressed here after these days and uh, de taking into account how uh, um, popular the training zones are and the colonoscopy championship is held there. It's been the third year of this event and we supported the uh, Kash uh, Mr. Kashin's initiative started in, uh, in Yaroslavl. Yaroslavl is the leader and Moscow starts to catch up with this wonderful town. And uh, and the price is the uh, uh, trip to Japan for this championship. Uh, very briefly, in the endoscopy today, we, there are key factors which, in principle, change the whole situation. They and exist not only in endoscopy, and in general in medicine. Everything is uh, simple in endoscopy. We, we experience technical revolution there. It means that we got wonderful new equipment which gives us wonderful 
opportunities. Already today we speak about artificial intelligence, about algorithmization of our work. And second thing, what happens in parallel? Changing the structure of medical institutions, rethinking of the existing models of uh, medical aid, and the creation of a medical ecosystem around the patient. We are building a new model of uh, patient-centric medicine, which would change the role of outpatients departments because the patient will not need to uh, go for smaller things to outpatients. Everything will be controlled by gadgets, by devices. Today you can see the models of future hospitals which will uh, uh, appear in Moscow. It contributes to the fact that we are standing at the threshold of serious changes and we should uh, come back to the innovations topic. On this slide you can see Olympus, but the same slide can be shown by Pentax, by Forgy and other companies. And uh, Pentax and Olympus uh, um, mark 100 years anniversary this uh, year, and these companies did a great job in the endoscopy. Both companies have wonderful things in AI, uh, Metronix, so wonderful works from Yaroslav last year, marked as the best of best. The uh, presentation was held at the European Gastroenterological uh, Week in Barcelona. But there are issues which we need to discuss uh, all the time. First, in big cities there should be uh, health factories. The resources need to be concentrated. It's to the question that practically today endoscopy is not centralized in Moscow. It is spread across different departments and in these outpatients departments the quality is not at the level we expect. It's not uh, patient-centric. When the patient comes, uh, polyps uh, are detected, and they say, this is a list of analysis, go to the uh, hospital, and we're going to make a, a surgery. But it's not right. The person should receive to receive help at once and at, on the spot and very friendly under anesthesia. If the person is 45 years old, Galdrostone colonoscopy should be made. And then every 10 years, uh, these screenings should be repeated for and every year, once or two years, chemical tests should be done for uh, hidden blood. Uh, the second question is digitalization. On the second day yesterday, Anastasia Vladimirovna uh, devoted a lot of time to digital. Digital should be developed in colonoscopy. Colonists should you cannot do without digital development. A simple, single digital system is now launched in Moscow. The concept is written, the requirement specification are set out and funds already allocated. And we think we should end this story this year. All endoscopic uh, sets should be combined in one digital environment. All uh, uh, research should be done only based on single and uniform protocols. Every uh, research should be uh, recorded on video, and uh, and we understand that video sh in uh, should not be gigabytes and terabytes and not pentabytes, and much uh, bigger volumes. But on also in these situations, we are able to find uh, proper IT solutions. The most important issue, which we are going to tackle today, is the continuous uh, education and methodological maintenance. Every professional education has two problems. It's content and motivation of doctors to uh, for continuous learning. If in terms of content everything is more or less okay, we have wonderful projects such as uh, Qua Close Stand Up, um, Child Endoscopy, we have uh, Surgery Festival by Vishnevsky Institute, uh, Yaroslavl Symposium, uh, Korolev Symposium and others. Uh, whereas in motivation area, we need to uh, work further with doctors. And the Moscow doctor is a first step to motivate uh, Moscow doctors to develop their um, professionalism at the European level. Of course, uh, funding issues and uh, support issues are key issues, and also the re patient's responsibility for his her, or her health is a separate section at our forum. So, uh, generally speaking, what do we have now? 
what is uh, fulfilled on fact in our districts in Moscow is the number of gastro and colonoscopic uh, examinations. This uh, number is not enough to provide screening programs. What do we need? We need these figures. These figures are different in terms of colonoscopic by a number of, by an order of magnitude. It's, it means global change, which requires not just re equipment and rethinking of what it happens, but it requires retraining of doctors. Now we have 448 doctors endoscopists in Moscow. And um, to make this program done, we will need around 600 such specialists. We already calculated it all, and uh, we should organize absolutely different the whole work. That's what the endoscopic center should look like. This is a technology which we uh, laid out. First, the registration area, then consulting, preparation area, and segregated special colonoscopic and gastroscopic uh, uh, stations, mini surgery, sterilization room, uh, VIP uh, stations, and so on and so forth. Everything is planned and designed. It is already uh, under development. It is adopted by our construction specialists. And we have first 10 pilot hospitals where we will implement it. And the first start, it's going to be Botkin Hospital. Funds allocated, renovations begin, uh, started, and equipment will be purchased by the life cycle contracts. This is a key thing and very important thing for our further work. For endoscopists, I'm not going to scare uh, you with all these difficult questions of purchasing and procurement, but the point is if the endoscope is broken, next day you should get the replacement. If uh, nine days they don't bring it within nine days, they get fined. And uh, now you see the uh, layout of uh, endoscopic department in Plitnyov uh, Hospital number 57. This is a working scheme with two corridors in Buyanov um, Hospital. Mr. Salik of the chief surger, surgeon, he nods and he already knows and how it all works. So, Evgeny Lenich, this uh, is the layout of endoscopic centers which will uh, make some screening functions, right? And they are deliberately designed in a way, yes, they are under stationary departments, under hospitals. These small uh, rooms which uh, are scattered, they couldn't um, provide polyectomy in um, outpatients departments, should be closed. We should migrate these um, doctors, we should train them and uh, may provide them work places in uh, hospitals. Someone would uh, uh, object uh, and uh, repose, but uh, you shouldn't do it. Once in 10 years we make colonoscopy and the person can come, not uh, the distance of two kilometers, but some longer distance and make this uh, uh, examinations, especially when the conditions will be very good for that. And f again, the concentration of resources in health factors, this is very important. A simple example, if we got a patient with uh, problems of uh, uh, cancer in uh, intestine, and uh, the mortality now is very high at these uh, um, operations, if we make screening colonoscopy out of, from the outpatient departments, we won't be able to see adenomas and lasers, and we won't uh, come to the proper adenome detection rate. I'm going to discuss it within the big project which was launched on the initiative of Alessandro and Cesare Hassano from Italy, and uh, on uh, the initiative of Mr. Cushion, which is called Qual Call Quality Colonoscopy. The project was launched in 2014. The idea of the project was presented in Yaroslavl. That was the first prospective uh, multiple discussion, uh, multiple uh, um, examination in Moscow. What we had, we had uh, 
18% of ADR. We had bad preparation, uh, suboptimal preparation of uh, colon. We had uh, practically quite long, long uh, colonoscopy, not always intubation of the uh, um, sesim and split re regime use of only 25%. A lot of patients were prepared by evening doses. It was not good at all. Results were published under the auspices of the president of the Russian endoscopic community. These results were published in a foreign magazine. And uh, next we launched the uh, um, screening endoscopy quality project launched. We had a course in Yaroslav, we had a course with the participation of our Italian colleagues. These training courses are organized on an annual basis and they have a wide coverage. We have a great support from Professor Veselov and our Japan, uh, Japanese colleagues. I already mentioned the championship on colonoscopy. You see the picture of Andrei Mihin, who was one of the first uh, winners and who already underwent uh, training. And the courses are uh, annual. We uh, collect a lot of uh, interesting endoscopists. And we see the training goes in Ufa, in Khodas Clinic, in Rostov, and in other cities. Quacol 2 was launched in Quacol 2. Quacol 2 uh, involved more than 50 medical centers, and the results already prepared, and uh, we hope they will be published uh, under the support of Alessandro in very soon. On the International Congress, like NSJ Days, uh, uh, they were presented also at the past gastroenterological week by Mr. Kashin. And in general, they demonstrate that in 50 regions, um, they know a lot about this program. The awareness of this program is very high. And uh, Quacol definitely will be developed in future. An information uh, leaflet was published in the free access and all recommendations are published in uh, the magazine Dokazatelne Gastroenterologia. There are also regional initiatives for Quacol, including the uh, quality program of uh, endoscopy in Yaroslav. And Sergei will share with us this information. The team of experts, and uh, here I'd like to finish my speech. If you have any questions, I'm ready to, to, to handle them. Thank you very much, Evgeny, colleagues, dear colleagues. Let's thank uh, Evgeny for this wonderful um, presentation. Just my a question from my side. How do you see the uh, digitalization of endoscopy in the framework of our capital? You know, Moscow already has good examples of implemented projects, starting from the fact that we globally have a project of a single analytical system of our um, healthcare system in Moscow. But very simple example for you, it's the single radiological information service. When all uh, examinations and radiologies uh, are combined in one network, we understand what equipment works, what doesn't. When we see a team which checks uh, from 10 to 15 percent of all uh, uh, x-rays and all examinations and analyzes its quality. But the most important thing is the patient. You can visit the stand of digital patient. The patient can get access to its electronic record and medical record. And anytime he can press a button and can see the results of uh, his analysis and examinations. And we want the patient, if he comes to another region and any place of the world can enter the system and see the results of endoscopy. And the results are also available for gastroenterologists. This is very important. It is even more important. Thank you very much. Please, if you have questions, Alessandro, you're from your side. So, 
Good morning, everybody. It's a great pleasure being here. Thanks for the introduction, Professor Starkov, and thanks for the invitation, Professor Nigonov, Professor Kashin. So, interesting talk. So, I think um, we are just at the beginning of the long journey, and this is a journey that should bring um, um, a lot of benefit from, for Russian patients, because if you look to the European situation, Almost all countries now, they have organized screening program. So Russia doesn't have an organized screening program. This means that the mortality of colorectal cancer in Russia is much higher than other European countries. This is uh, uh, not good for the, for the patients. It is unacceptable in general. So I really like what you're doing as an expert, all of you here, in promoting uh, and these initiatives, but most importantly, what you're doing at the government level to get some support to have organized screening. I think that for the future, this country, this beautiful country that I love so much, it deserves a big organized program for preventing colorectal cancer. Because colorectal cancer in this country is the third cause of mortality. So it means it's the third, it's the third level of uh, uh, taking patients away from their family because of uh, the absence of uh, screening programs. So I hope that all these meetings uh, will uh, um, bring uh, a new decision and new organization because you really need that. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have any more questions or comments, please. I see there are questions from the audience. Uh, we cannot hear you well. We need to pass the mic. Hello. I am the head of the Department of Endoscopy at one of the clinical hospitals. And uh, we do have these uh, offices where endoscopy can be carried out. First of all, I should say that the doctors know what they do. I have great doctors, and I respect them highly. One doctor carries out 17 endoscopic examinations in order to make sure that everybody is provided with an access. So I have three endoscopic doctors, and you can multiply three by 17 and see what is our workload. And it does not mean that we do not want to work uh, and move forward. However, you need to understand what is going on in hospitals. In my understanding, endoscopy is not about screening, especially when it comes to gastroendoscopy. For me, gastroscopy should be patient-oriented, and it should be available at every outpatient clinic. And uh, actually, Gastroscopy has a number of indications. If you talk about applying gastroscopy, pain, stomach pain, weakness, um, uh, are already good enough indications for gastroscopy. When we talk uh, with our physicians, uh, we tell them that, yeah, these are the indications. And uh, in my understanding, gastroscopy should be available again in every outpatient clinic, and then and only then we will be able to provide accurate diagnostics. Because people come not only to diagnose cancer, every patient is uh, scared about this cancer, but people have erosions and so on. And we have a lot of patients that take anticoagulants, and uh, we uh, also have people that take uh, pain-killing uh, pills, etc., etc., and all of them have to go through these examinations not once every 10 years. Talking about colon colonoscopy every once every 10 years, I wouldn't agree about it. I see patients from colonoproctologists, and we're talking about senior patients, uh, uh, patients in their 70s and 80s, and they have to have these examinations maybe once every half a year, once every year. And if you tell them that they should have this examination one every 10 years, they wouldn't agree. And I cannot refer them to screening centers that are um, far away because they're already quite weak. So this is not in line with the concept that we have. There are different levels. I apologize. I apologize, dear colleague. It is not a 
discussion. If you heard, if you would listen to me attentively, I would ask. Uh, I was asking whether anyone has questions. So, uh, so far, I did not open the floor for questions. I apologize. Perhaps I did not hear you. Well, let me get back to it very quickly. Well, as for your hospital six, it is a good clinic with a very high level endoscopic services and as I understand Irina Kemena uh, was in charge of opening an endoscopic uh, department providing services in your hospital or clinic while you are not talking about the center of factor of health as I refer to it but you are talking about private matters related to um, uh, prescribing and do you would you remove polyps? Uh, do you are you able to solve all the problems of your patients? Are you able to provide anesthesia for these examinations? Do you do fat uh, recording of uh, all the data? If there are any complications, are you able to refer the patient to intensive care unit? I don't think so. Therefore, talking about the safety of the patients, and for us, this is the utmost priority. We are going to develop our health policy. Therefore, think about it. We are not about uh, talking about local interests. We are talking about the safety of patient, patients. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, uh, you also have a comment. Uh, Right? Or should we move on? I will say a few words. And now we would like to give the floor to Alessandro with his presentation. And he will talk about European experience of uh, colorectal cancer. Yeah. That's the topic of my presentation is the answer to the previous comment. So you know, in this country, sorry for saying that, um, this is the only country in the world where uh, in the endoscopy uh, rooms uh, you perform more upper GI endoscopy than lower GI endoscopy. And this is really unique. And this is something that has to be changed because what you mentioned, the erosion and anticoagulants, they have zero impact on uh, real uh, um, patients. Uh, disease and prevention. So you're still doing too many upper GI endoscopy and you're not using the resources to do colonoscopy. So probably in the future, you have to make a little change and have more resources, more physicians, more rooms dedicated to colonoscopy rather than upper GI endoscopy. So how I move the slides? I can move the slides by myself. Okay, thank you. So, um, why are we here? We are here because uh, we know that uh, colonoscopy is the medical procedure with the uh, most profound impact on patients' life. So, um, these are the European data. This is um, advertisement by uh, European Society of Gastroenterology. And this advertisement is saying that in Europe, so just Western Europe, uh, every three minutes, one patient is dying because of colorectal cancer. This means that we started this debate 20 minutes ago, and uh, about uh, five to six patients already died because of cancer. We are here debating um, there is um, terrible epidemic of cancer that is overwhelming all of us, all our families. And um, if you look to the projection of the incidence of colorectal cancer in the next uh, five years, you see the situation in Europe is going worse and worse despite the introduction of screening programs. This means that there is something wrong in the environment, something wrong in the food, something wrong in what we do in our behaviors. If you look at the projection between 2005 and 2025, you will see that Germany, Italy, UK and France will have an increase in the incidence of colorectal cancer of about 20%. So it means that overall in Europe we're moving 
from half a million of colorectal cancer uh, in 2019 to about 700,000 uh, patients with colorectal cancer in five years. And this is also very important. I took this article from Financial Times that I love to consult uh, every weekend. And um, this Financial Times article is reminding everybody that there is a big change. So we were used to consider colorectal cancer as a cancer of the old guys. Indeed, there are many data showing that there is a sharp increase of cancer incidence also in the youngest population. And this is why that the American Task Force of Colorectal Cancer, including oncologists, gastroenterologists, and surgeons, are considering to um, include patients much younger in their screening program starting from the age of 40. And also in Europe now, the new recommendation will be by the age of 40, 45, you should start having your colonoscopy. And why colonoscopy? Because it's been known that uh, colorectal cancer arises from a precursor, which is the polyp. And according to this uh, fantastic New England Journal paper in 2012, that for the first time have proven to all of us that patients undergoing colonoscopy and removing polyps, they are fully protected against development of colorectal cancer. So, but what does it mean colorectal cancer? Colorectal cancer is a combination of different tissue factors, but mostly is also organization. This is what Professor Nicolo was saying before. If, if you don't get organized with a nice platform that will be available for all physicians and for all patients, will be very difficult to save life from colorectal cancer. So what type of screening does work better? We we have a simple answer. If you look to this uh, European map, most of the European countries, they have a very well-organized screening program. So it's not opportunistic any longer. So it means the patient receives information from their own health institution, from their GPs, from the hospitals, from the government. They are invited to participate to the screening program. And, uh, when we say organization and organize a screening program, it means that you have to define a target population with the target population, with um, the team responsible for involving this target population, how you manage this, that, and how you provide quality assurance structure that will make sure that you do everything in the right manner. This is what we do in Italy, you see, now we have uh, different coverages in terms of the age, but if you look to the Italian map, there are only two red points overall in the entire country. So it means that now almost 95% of the entire Italian population is undergoing organized screening. So we have about 14 million people who are subject of screening program for colorectal cancer with a huge involvement. We have 120 active organized program. So when you have to choose the test for uh, colorectal cancer, you can go directly to colonoscopy. You, you can have uh, a fecal blood test. The answer is that most European countries have made their, choose, their choice and they went to fit. So fecal immunochemical test. So why fecal immunochemical tests? There are many advantages on fecal uh, tests and very few disadvantages, but the most important disadvantage is uh, the compliance. So why patients are not uh, going to the program? Because they do not have right awareness of the risk they are running about colorectal cancer. So. I discussed first with uh, Professor Nicola, Professor Kashin. I think also in this country, like uh, in other European countries, there should be a massive campaign of information for patients. They should know what is their own risk of developing the colorectal cancer. So let me go fast. So why we, in Europe, we have decided to go to FIT rather than GUAIAC? 
because fit works much better. If you look to this table in both, windows age 50 to 59 and 60 to 69, if you look to the detection of advanced adenoma and colorectal cancer with fit is twice higher as compared with WIAC. And um, this is a nice um, uh, slide that um, represented the paper that we have uh, published four years ago looking to the impact of using feed in the northern part of Italy. So in northern part of Italy now we got a reduction of colorectal cancer incidence of 20%. So it means we have much less disease, with much less hospital stay, much less chemotherapy, much less need of surgeries. Of course, it's a matter of adoption. So you see there are regions where the compliance is very low. In those regions, still mortality remains very high. So it's also important that you follow uh, European guidelines. There are different institutions that have issued the guidelines. Uh, ourselves as an endoscopist, we rely on European Society of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy guidelines. So, which is just setting uh, the age of the type of screening program. So what about colonoscopy? Going straight forward to colonoscopy is a problem because we do not have uh, the resources, I mean uh, the endoscopy rooms, the physician, the equipment, the nurses to send everybody to colonoscopy. We know that it's very highly efficacy, but the problem is money and low uptake also because not all patients are happy to undergo colonoscopy. So a few words about uh, colonoscopy. So we need to remind ourselves colonoscopy is an imperfect tool. It's very operator dependent. And you see, sometimes we can miss a very small and flat lesion. It's important that everybody doing a screening colonoscopy as a physician is fully trained in recognizing that those small lesions that uh, can be the cause of interval cancer. So we see in this paper from GI endoscopy a few years ago and uh, reporting the fact that when you measure your diagnostic capability, it's a, you, there is a huge variation among physicians. This is not acceptable. It means if the patient has the luck to come to one place where we have a higher adenoma detection rate, his life is protected against cancer, but if the patient is going in a place where there is no big a ADR, adenoma detection rate, there will be no protection for cancer. And we know from this paper, from gastroenterology 2017, that when you keep your adenoma detection rate very high, you are, protect, you are giving significant protection for the patients. So there are um, European guidelines, there is also European group supported by Norgene looking to this uh, indicator in Europe. These are all the countries participating to this uh, European team for quality in colonoscopy. I think Sergei, the, probably and Yuri, very soon uh, Russian endoscopists should join this kind of quality program and participate to the survey because when you look to the survey data are not extremely good. You see, we should have 9% of good prep. We have only 8%. We're still recommending a low volume split dose. If you look how many are doing low dose split dose, still 25%. It means that 75% of European patients, they are not adopting the split modality. And also when you look to the sickle intubation rate, which is a very important key performance indicator we still are not that good because we go to the SICOM, but nobody is documenting that is going to the SICOM. This is a very important point. So um, let me go to adenoma detection rate. If I ask all of you who is routinely recording their performance in colonoscopy, who knows what is the adenoma detection rate? You see only 18% of endoscopists in Europe is able to show what is is on or err on adenoma detection rate, and this is a big problem. And when you look to this slide in Italy, we have 
um, very limited number of physicians reporting ADR and there are a lot of regions where ADR is extremely suboptimal. So they are very below the 25% threshold that has been set by the guideline as a quality indicator for optimal colonoscopy. You see, we have a lot of regions where the ADR is below 20% and this is not acceptable. I think it's important that you know this data because you can make analysis of what you're doing in your regions. You can try to improve what you do. So um, also when you find the polyp, uh, you should consider what you do. You can move from, now we have the option of cold polypectomy. So we have a wide range of uh, options from cold polypectomy to full thickness and ESD and whatever we have to provide just following the guidelines and the proper indication you know that there are data that's been published in gastroenterology two years ago from United States showing that half of the colorectal surgeries half of all interventions about colorectal in the United States are performed because of benign polyps that have not been removed by the endoscopy. So this is a big issue. It's a big point of discussion. So we should improve also that. So what about complications? Fortunately, complications are not that high. Of course, complications tend to be higher when you are doing a lot of intervention for polyps. So um, in conclusion, I think that colorectal cancer can be defeated everywhere, Europe, Italy, Russia, everywhere. Of course, you have to start with organized program and feed is mandatory to have uh, optimal results in terms of identifying those patients who have to be addressed to colonoscopy. And once you start with the program with colonoscopy, quality is the word. Without quality colonoscopy, without quackol, you will not serve your country, you will not serve your patients properly. Thanks. Thank you very much, Alessandro. Wonderful uh, speech, dear colleagues. Please, if uh, you have any questions, please, Sergei, you wanted to ask something. Alessandro, thank you very much for the brilliant presentation. My question uh, relates to the fact how important is for every medical person, for every doctor who makes colonoscopy to control the quality of colonoscopy. Our session is devoted to quality. So is every, does every department have an opportunity to take into account all quality indicators? If not, so is it possible to, to entrust uh, doctors who work in departments where uh, there's no quality control, uh, the adenome detection that is not calculated, can we trust them to um, carry out screening colonoscopy? This is a good point. Quality means everything. So if you do not record your performance, you can never say that you are doing a good job. And um, in the future, at least in Europe, uh, there will be a different approach in terms of paying the procedure. The, we say that we will be paid per quality. It means uh, that we will get the money, reimbursement from the government, only if we are able to show that our adenoma detection rate is recorded, it's about 25%. Otherwise, they will pay half of the fee of the colonoscopy, and this is a big impact. We are very scared about that. I think we need uh, some, um, a, some pressure from the institution. Otherwise, we have, as a physician, we are very busy, we are overwhelmed with many issues, and we tend to forget to do this. But when we get under financial pressure, like we are going now in my country, in many European countries, now everybody wants to record their own ADR. So the idea, the project, what um, Professor Nikonov mentioned, creation of special centers, uh, which will be equipped with video recording systems, with uh, systems of registration, uh, video or colonoscopy registration, where there is an opportunity to consider and to control all quality criteria of colonoscopy. This is the only idea which can uh, bring us to efficient screening of colorectal cancer in the country, right? Yeah. 
It would be beautiful. And also, if you can record all this procedure, you can create uh, immense library that can be used to develop any kind of artificial intelligence because uh, machine learning, a deep learning system, they need to be fed with, uh, um, with the images and pictures. Of course, if you create this, every company worldwide will come to you and they want to have your library. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dear colleagues in the room, if anyone wants to ask a question, please, you have an opportunity. No questions? Well, let's move on. Let's uh, welcome once again Alessandro. Thank him. His role is great in the development of this uh, uh, area for us. And uh, with big pleasure, we'd now to go to give the floor to Sergei Kashin, your experience of uh, quality control implementation. Distinguished chairman, distinguished colleagues and guests, for me and my team, it's a big honor and pleasure to present our results, the results of our hard and long-term work on uh, implementing the quality control system in endoscopic departments of uh, Yaroslavl region. And uh, as a matter of fact, the situation is the same as in other Russian regions, as in Moscow, and those uh, remarks and comments which uh, were uh, voiced in this room today, they uh, are relevant for all uh, Russian regions and all Russian departments. It is all it is difficult for all of us because we don't have uh, necessary technical opportunities for our day-to-day -day work. Can I have the clicker, please? Uh, however, in Yaroslav region, we uh, proposed, we and we uh, did a lot of job in the recent 10 years and uh, contributed a lot in uh, creating an efficiently operating endoscopic service. Please pay attention that in our region and as many other regions, we uh, execute around 100,000 endoscopic studies a year. Unfortunately, the vast majority of them, 70, 70 percent of these examinations are uh, endoscopic uh, examinations of upper part of uh, um, gastrointestinal tract. But in the recent years, we see a growing trend of uh, growing colonoscopic examinations. And I think it is related not only to some uh, technical features and uh, with a great focus on uh, the proper e equipping our departments, but it is also due to efficient educational program for uh, doctors which are aimed at their training of uh, safe and efficient colonoscopy. What was done in the recent years? First, in the Yaroslav uh, Clinical Hospital, we established an expert center which is equipped with the top level endoscopic systems of all leading producers of endoscopic equipment Olympus, Pentax, and Fuji. And it allows us to be real experts in this area and understand very well technical experts of every colonoscope to be efficient in creating and developing training programs. On, apart from that, every workplace in our clinics is equipped with the special endoscopic systems when the endoscopic module, EMIS, and the information system, which allows us to record photo and video of uh, every endoscopic examination in uh, the high resolution format and it also allows us to provide quality control you can see here the equipment of our workstations on the left in this slide you can see that each rack has a pc and the uh, image is brought up in uh, our ordinator's room where experts and managers can see in the real-time mode what happens in every working room. Apart from that, our department has a special place for 
uh, morning briefings with uh, anesthesiologists and um, we know very well our working schedule where every doctor has a his own color, you can see it on the monitor, and uh, we understand the load of every specialist in every working room in uh, the current day. In Yaroslavl, we established an endoscopic training center under the support of the Kanazawa um, University, and the Professor Toroito opened this center in 2009. Now we have official the agreements of our medical university with Barcelona University and Florence University, where we also have opportunities to train our specialists. For the recent years, we experienced a lot of changes in equipping these training centers. We have symbionics, we have mechanical um, model simulator for training colonoscopic specialists where leading European and Japanese experts carry out their master classes and workshops. And last year we had a great event. Olympus Company opened a reference center on our premises to train the new technologies which the company is actively promoting in uh, our endoscopic environment in the endoscopic life. Well, we established the regional quality control uh, project in 2012-2013. Twelve hospitals, uh, regional hospitals in the Yaroslav regions received same uh, video um, systems, video recording systems with the competence center in the Yaroslav Ecological Hospital. And we have an opportunity now to work in this institution center, record endoscopic pictures, and to store them in uh, the joint uh, governmental server within the uh, healthcare program. And we can provide quality control not only in our hospital, but also in uh, regional stations. MS systems include a program which allows not only a photographic uh, pictures, but also to fill out quickly endoscopic protocols and send them to our uh, medical institutions. It happens due to a unique instruction of uh, the regional healthcare department, and I must say that the governor of our region and the government, uh, government and regional ministry, healthcare ministry, pays a lot of attention to the endoscopic uh, program. You can see on the slide this revolutionary uh, executive order uh, which contains all criteria, all quality criteria and uh, the need to carry out endoscopic examinations. In particular, you see colonoscopy is described according to the criteria which exist today and which exist today in all international standards. In endoscopic protocols, our specialists should mark the uh, preparation level and should fix and record all uh, main points uh, and uh, make pictures of main points which are standards and which are included in uh, international recommendations. It is relevant not only to the lower part of the gastrointestinal part but the upper uh, gastrointestinal tract. These are the main uh, guidelines of this document and the main bullet points which allow us to provide proper quality control. On, apart from that, we are moving towards establishing a single uh, checklist uh, system and uh, consent system which would ensure both patient and the doctor from unexpected and negative uh, factors and medical errors. Uh, one of the elements, as you may see, maybe not of the artificial intelligence, but automated quality control, which we have in our MS program, is automated uh, recording of uh, colonoscope time um, from the dome of the blind gut, which should be not less than six minutes, according to the national standards. and. Uh, those novelties which were created by our programmers allows us with the precision to one second to record the time of 
uh, colonoscope uh, extraction from the blind gut. Uh, other elements which we're about to implement in our work uh, will be presented today during the II session. This is automated uh, determination of the blind gut uh, dome and uh, other parts of the um, uh, in of the gastrointestinal tract, which allows us to make uh, our examination fuller and more extensive. We also have a prototype of the system which can automatically calculate the number of polyps which are detected in the colon during diagnostic colonoscopy. Such novelties resulted in the fact that today, twice a year, we calculate, so far, unfortunately, manually, not automatically, we calculate main, the main um, uh, quality colonoscopy indicator, which is the ADR, adenoma detection rate. Uh, this allows us not only to monitor the situation in general, but also to take into account and to uh, evaluate the work of every specialist. And here, on this slide, I would like to ask a question to uh, Professor Repici. Alessandro, please. You see on this slide uh, the ADR rate for each uh, specialist of our department. They are different. Unfortunately, these indicators are different. It is partially depend on the um, population of, uh, of, of patients which every of these specialists examine. We have a few doctors who work in uh, outpatients department which is focused on the examinations of oncological patients. However, what is your opinion? How can we change the situation in the medical department? And can, how can we level out the uh, quality indicators, uh, in particular ADR rate? What needs to be done by the endoscopic uh, he department head of the clinics to improve the ADR level for the specialist, which is not uh, uh, in line with international standards? And overall, the data are very good because most of your physicians, they are above 25 percent in the latest uh, uh, registration of ADR. I would say that you need a specific program for those who are below, and I think they should be aware of that. They should be aware of that they are outperformers, and um, they should have a dedicated training uh, with videos and slides, and they should be uh, under pressure for at least three to six months, ADR every month. This is what we do with our fellow. When they don't get the 25 percent, they are recorded every month, and every month there is a meeting and we discuss how they do that. And most of the time we we get successful. So I'm sure that if you apply this, they will be very successful to you as well. Uh, thank you. And uh, two more slides left in my presentation, and I will complete. In conclusion, I'd like to mention that such approaches uh, to implementing the gradual implementation of the quality control system, of course, have positive results in the situation in our region in general. However, uh, there are difficulties, and we face difficulties in our day-to-day -day practice, uh, which is the lack of uh, Russian recommendations and guidelines and Russian standards in uh, this issue. And I really hope that the initiatives which uh, we receive now from uh, Mr. Starkov, from uh, the chief specialist on endoscopy in the healthcare ministry, and uh, from the profile commission on endoscopy, they will result in uh, the creation of standards and recommendations based on which we can easily implement our performance criteria in our day-to-day -day work. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Yes, we work on that really, and you, as uh, the chief specialist of uh, uh, other departments are part of this uh, working group, and we are going to move on and develop this area. Thank you very much, dear colleagues. Evgeny, what is our next plan? Uh, the only thing I wanted to add 
that starting from this year, Moscow departments start to implement another unprecedented project, medical project, in the nearest three to four months, all uh, medical departments of Moscow will uh, get a video uh, stations, video conferencing stations, video conferencing will be provided for every meeting for every doctor from uh, any other uh, outpatients department or stationary department. What's the point of this. Any time, any moment, you can organize a meeting, a video conference in a polyclinics. For example, the, um, the therapist can, from the outpatients department, can get in touch with the surgeons who um, provide the treatment for the patient and uh, make some consulting on the patient. This is one of the elements which is really important in endoscopy because without digitization, without the full-fledged development of a good communication, it is not possible to move on. And we keep uh, repeating in during our trainings that ascologists and endoscopists should be a joint organism, a joint team. So thanks a lot to everybody. Thanks a lot to Alexandru Yuri Givanovich, Sergei and all colleagues. Thank you very much. Let's uh, cheer up everybody. Let's finish a little bit earlier our meeting today, but as a matter of fact, it was really important, fruitful and useful. Uh, it was devoted to a very important aspect, very important issue of endoscopy. Uh, quality endoscopy, high quality endoscopy is the issue which is extremely important now and our whole activity and the work of all our experts which you see today and the Russian Endoscopic Society and the Russian community for of surgeons and uh, in particular uh, the section of uh, radiology and technologies support the development and support all these training events and the programs to make the highest quality of our endoscopy work in our country and on behalf of, of uh, the chief surgeon and chief uh, endoscopic of the Ministry of Healthcare and on behalf of uh, Mr. Avelinshvili, I'd like to welcome you all uh, and uh, wish you all the success and good luck and let's work on and develop this area. Thank you very much for your participation. Thank you.